Kony invited me at one in the morning to a poetry sharing event on Google Meet. She said she wanted my vibe at the gathering and wanted me to read something out, either my own or something from the theme of the evening, which was crabs. To my own surprise, as I don't really write poetry, I found myself saying yes. I think it was Kony's magnetic pull, and I'm happy I did so. There was so much warmth and love, and people were so informal and unassuming. Everybody had something special to share, and there was an interesting conversation around the controversial Kipling, who was chosen as poet of the evening. I was beyond overwhelmed at the way my reading of this elegy to my beloved Kadam tree and all its fallen companions was received. The event was not recorded, wisely so. But I wanted a record and I read it out once into my webcam after the event and saved it. As I was somewhat drunk at the time of reading it, I decided to do a fresh take and I thought it a good idea to choose daylight to do it. Here goes, the fallen and the felled, an elegy, or should I say a lyrical lament. The thud of axe on dead wood, an eerie ring when it chances upon a still living cell, sap filled and hope filled, till the axe deals the final blow and it shatters, spurting sap blood. Trees don't die all at once. They rebirth themselves many times before you write them off as mere wood. All around me, dull, empty thuds. Killer axe, striking the dead till they are robbed of all dignity. And still there are new green sprouts on them, crying, life. Cut to the ring of metal against a brave living tree that stands breathing love at us as we betray it. Now that is a different sound. The tree pours forth its blessings even as it cries. The tree can't run. The executioner's axe at that of the undertaker, the same weapon, the same hands, different strokes. Weren't undertakers meant to give dignity to the deceased? Wonder where these fallen trunks and limbs are destined to go to light the pyres of the non-COVID fallen. For the COVID felled need high tech to save their souls and our bodies. Or the hearth fires of those who scrounge for leftover scraps from vegetable carts and warm them on the street over heaps of twigs and trash. The ones that fall through the cracks in every system, another kind of fallen. Will that fallen neem be the chosen of the Lord and come to life again as images of Jagannath, who rides his chariot in splendor come July? Will our stalwarts' hearts ring out once more under the caress of a dark maker's hands or those of a woodcarver who would bring their grace to life, albeit one frozen moment of that life, with stories enfolded in its curves? Will that breath of life dance in eddies through the nuances of a mridangam, fine-honed, to echo the cries and whispers my senses were tuned to pick up in their last birth. The grain looks me in the eye, leaving a farewell message for me as they haul the log away. As I stop to caress a limb of my beloved fallen, I see history writ between those bleeding lines, history that I will maybe understand when I too I'm among the fallen.